back to another episode of the Top Water Podcast. I am Justin Ellis. I am the host of this podcast. And today, I'm doing things a little bit different. I'm trying out some new equipment, trying out a lapel microphone. So that way is maybe the audio syncing issues that I have been having are maybe a thing of the past. Um, hopefully, the, the audio quality is, is going to be good on this episode but you know we won't know until it's done so yeah i know my hair's all a mess and i'm still in my fishing gear i'm like i literally got off the water probably about a little over an hour ago i got everything unloaded everything back in the house and a little bit of food and you know shoved down my gullet in order to come to do this podcast but let's get right to it. There is uh, one thing I do want to start off this episode by saying thank you to all you guys out there that are subscribing to this channel, that are watching these shows, and just keep doing what you're doing because I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. And I want to keep trying to bring the best information the best way possible. And I'm going to try new things. And I'm going to try it out and just so, you know, maybe it's going to be better, maybe it's not. But if it's not better, then, you know, we'll revert back. And if it's better, then, hey, let's keep moving forward with it. But right now, I, uh, I, today was, today was a weird day. And it, it almost seems like one of those days to where, like, if you, if you have, like, a perfect start or a perfect, like, day, like, oh, this, this should be the day to where, all the bass are biting. It just, it doesn't seem to pan out for me. I don't, I don't know why. Maybe maybe it's just nice weather and bass don't seem to be very active during bluebird skies. Or maybe it's something else I kind of realized. I think the bass on the lake that I've been fishing are actually pretty acclimated to when people really get onto the water. Because I noticed right around a certain time, it shuts down. Like 100%, it's like, it's like a ghost town. All the bass go home. Wherever they go, they, they hunker down, and it's like, it's like a storm. I mean, it, it's almost like fishing a storm. You're not going to get bit. You know, you're just out there surviving. But I just, I just notice right around a certain time, they... And it's right around like 10.30 to 11.30 is when they usually taper off and shut down on Springfield Lake. And I think the reason why is because from 10.30 to 11.30, that's when everybody starts flooding into the water. And everybody starts just paddling through the place. And it's not a very big, it's not a very big lake. It's really not. So whenever you have all this commotion, it just shuts everything down. And I, I just seem to have terrible luck past, you know, oh, I would almost say past, yeah, past, about past 11.30. Anything past 11.30, I mean, that's, that's a bonus fish, you know. So that's, that's something that I really, I, I really want to pay attention to. And that's something that I really want to make sure that I'm, focusing on especially with that sort of lake if i know it's going to shut down at this time there's no point really to stay out there past a certain time because it's just going to shut down you know why why keep why keep grinding forward when i know it's when the when i know the bite's off that's that's really kind of what i'm i'm thinking about this lake it's it's one of those lakes to where you can just kind of go ahead and pack it in because I've spent time from that 1130 to 330. Like today I, I left at like 230, something like that, 233, somewhere in there. And it's just, it's not worth it. That last three hours, four hours, whatever it is, whatever the time is, I don't know. Right now, right now, I'm, I'm just kind of sunbeat, you know, I got my, 
I still got my AFCO shirt on, which this, this right here during sunny days, oh man, this is my new favorite. This is my new favorite jacket. Well, not jacket, it's, it's a hoodie. But this is my new favorite hoodie whenever it's uh, sunny out because I can wear this during hot weather and still not be extremely hot and not just be blistering by the end of the day. So, I mean, that's, it's kind of, it's kind of nice. I mean, you do get warm. It does trap a little bit of heat inside of it. And especially right now I'm wearing an undershirt because it's cooler in the mornings than it is when it starts getting to the afternoon. So when it starts getting to the afternoon, yeah, it does get a little toasty in that undershirt kind of, I, I could probably lose the undershirt, but by then I'm already, I should already be getting off the water anyways, especially at this lake. Now maybe a different lake might be a little bit different, you know, maybe the fish might pull off and into certain areas and then they can, they're still catchable. What, what's weird about this place is it's, it's very hard to get them to get them to bite. It's very hard to get them to react. And I like that because it's a challenge. And I, I really like having the challenge of just really being able to really being able to catch fish whenever people aren't catching fish. That's really what it is. I mean, I, I don't, I don't really care that I'm really catching fish. I, I care that I'm catching fish. I mean, that's almost a selfish thing to kind of put, but that's almost the mentality that I kind of put myself in. I want to catch fish where, in places where people say you can't catch fish. So it's like, you can't do this here. And not like you can't do this here because, you know, it's against the rules. No. It's, it's perfectly well within, you know, all the guidelines and bylaws and whatever you have. it. It's all there. But what I'm doing is I'm catching fish in a place where other people say you can't catch fish. There's, there's it's so high pressure you can't catch fish here. There's too many bat. There's too many angles. Too many, too many baits going and and flowing past these these bass to really be, to to really, to really commit to your hook. And I I understand that because today I had a lot of short strikes. I had probably about a dozen short strikes. And some of those strikes, I think, were not only small bass, but I also think that they were probably bluegill, too. Just, just the way that they felt. It didn't feel big. It was just a bop, 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 or like a bop, bop, like a real quick succession of da, da. And I think what it is, is bluegill coming up and grabbing the tail, and then I'm jerking it away. Now, there I did miss a couple today. I did miss a couple today, uh, not because of lack of setting the hook or anything like that. It, it just, they just didn't have it in their mouth. They just didn't have the hook inside their mouth. They, I, I, what I think was happening was they were grabbing the underspin part. So I was fishing an underspin, which was this right here, that guy right there. That's what I was fishing. Right on that SLX Dobbins combo. It's not an actual combo, it's just a, it's just a combo that I paired up together. I mean, I really like that SLX series. I really do. I haven't tried out their rods, but I like the, I like the Dobbins Fury lineup paired with that SLX. That, has that nice moderate feel even though that's a medium heavy rod and it, it it's a fast action rod so you still get a lot of tip to it but it has a pretty decent parabolic bend to it so what i find is it typically is more moderate than a lot of medium heavy rods 
Whereas I feel like I still have enough backbone to be able to like horse the fish when I need to. So it's kind of it's kind of the nice place between the two worlds of you know heavy duty power fishing stiff rods and the uh, lighter action rods. It's, it's like right down in the middle, and I really kind of like that. Now I do think that maybe with like crankbaits. I kind of need a little bit more of a bendy rod. I need more of a medium action, like a medium. But I, I really don't think that anything lighter than a like once once I get a medium action rod, I'll I'll be covered on the crankbait side. But I don't fish crankbaits that often. You know, I mean that's just I mean that's just kind of is what it is. I don't fish. I don't fish them that often. You know, I actually fish more uh, swim baits and underspins and frogs and and chatter baits and spinner baits, that sort of thing. I actually use more soft plastic stuff than I do with hard plastic stuff. I, I just I just seem to have better. I I seem to have better technique. I think that's the best way to put it. Is that I have better technique with the. Uh, the soft plastics like like this right here i mean everybody knows that the jackhammer right there that that guy is an absolute monster and i did catch one bass off of here i did catch one but that one was a quick it, it was a quick release it was one of those ones where i wasn't quite paying attention to i mean i was trying to do a couple of things at once the fish was kind of bleeding so like when i hooked it i it hooked it through the nose and i pulled it through the, pulled it out through the nose and it was bleeding pretty bad and i was trying to get it back in the water as quick as possible and i was trying to get my phone while i was trying to put him in the water and he bucked and it, it, he came out my hands well you know what are you going to do you know the only thing you can do is just kind of just let it be. Let it be because, I mean, you know, you ain't, you ain't going to be able to reach in and grab that thing. He's going to swim out faster than you can, uh, you can reach. And he did. He just, he just took off. So, you know, I didn't get, I didn't get any pictures of him, but I'm pretty sure I got video of him, which that's, that's another thing. I haven't even gone through the video yet of, all the all the video footage and, and all the catches i mean hopefully this time because when i wear a chesty i tend to not get the greatest angle on my fish catches or whenever i'm fishing i just it doesn't seem to get a good angle but i i feel like the, having the head strap gives a little bit better of an angle but yeah, I'm not too sold on it. You know, I, I kind of like the angle. I like the overhead view. But I'm not sold. You know, just because of... I'm just all over the place whenever I'm fishing. I'm just looking this way. And I'm looking this way. And I'm constantly turning my head. You know, because I'm constantly scanning for blow-ups, for bait fish, for whatever's happening... You know, I'm trying to pay attention to what's going on. And so my head's on a swivel and it's just constant. So when it's like that, having some sort of, you know, camera on your head, all you're doing is just panning all the time and you're just looking all the time. And it's just this constant run around of your head just moving everywhere. So instead of having that the chesty seems to be a little bit more of a stable platform. You get more of a, a solid image right in the front. But the only problem with that is you don't really see everything that's going on. You don't really get the best vantage point. So unless my head, like my neck was in some sort of brace to where it just locked it. And it's just like, oh, here we go, you know. And that's, that's how you looked. Then, yeah. But a lot of the times when I'm fishing, with I'll, I'll cast off to the side or I'll cast over here. And then it's like, oh, crap, I got to turn the camera back this way. So it kind of becomes a pain. 
but I'm anxious to see what all I got on that footage because I mean there should be some pretty decent catches on this this one um, nothing like major big just you know your regular cookie cutter size I think they were anywhere from like 12 to 14 inches you know legal limit in the uh, the grass patches like no, no grass patches what am I talking about? I've gotten too much sun. Ginger shouldn't be left out in the sun. But, uh, no, it's a uh, legal limit outside of a lot of your uh, lake fishing areas. So, usually, usually that 12 inch mark is usually, that's the legal limit. But most fisheries have it at, set to 15 as a, as a special legal size uh but those fisheries are usually your like lakes and reservoirs and that sort of type of stuff but i also went out and well i didn't go out but i bought one of these savage bluegills one of those guys right there and don't get me wrong i think it's a really cool looking bait you know you got the 3d fins hanging off the side and it looks good coming through the water. It doesn't have a lot of action. That tail just barely kicks. Barely kicks. But the one thing I do like about this bait, and maybe maybe the way I'm going to start fishing it, and it's kind of hard to do in the area that I was at. Maybe it's, this would be better for like a rocky sort of area or somewhere that doesn't have a lot of... of hang-ups snags a lot of especially since i was fishing in an area that had a lot of lily pads and a lot of lily pad stems this right here would hang up in those lily pad stems all the time and it was it was kind of a pain in the ass to actually fish it but the one thing i did like is that really tight action of the tail because i mean it was just just flutter it's just this little flutter but it had that really tight action. But the one thing I liked about it is you'd hop it and it would come up and it would drop and it would be like, and it would sit like this. So whenever it sits onto the bottom, it would sit like that. So you'd hop it, it would do this little flutter thing and it would flutter back down, boom. Hop it, boom, hop it, boom. And I thought that I, I saw that and I was like, huh, that is a unique action to a bait. So I think, I think there's going to be application for this bait right here. I just think the application for it may be more of a bed fishing application. Just because the way it sits, because since it sits like this, nose down, I think that would be much more likely for a, a bass to come and grab it. You can't fish it fast. This is not a fast bait. Matter of fact, if anything, this bait needs to be like slowly moseyed along. And I would honestly like it if this thing was weedless, but it's not. And that's kind of just something that you're, we're just going to have to deal with. But other than the fact that it's not weedless, it, I mean, I like the profile. I like the look of it. It has a good 3D form to it. The eyes look good. When it swims, you know, that has that tight little bluegill kick. Because if you notice when bluegills swim, they don't have this big, like, fan action. They have this tight little kick. And, they just, and that's it. They're really just dirty, just pew, pew, you know, like that. So you don't don't expect there to be bluegill baits to where it has this huge action, you know. Like I I don't necessarily feel like that's a good action for a bluegill bait. I feel like a good bluegill imitator is going to be tight. It's not gonna it's not gonna have a lot of action. It's gonna look good, which this. And I gotta say, it looks good. It looks good. And it has that tight action. So, I mean, 
but you can't fish it fast. You just, you just can't fish it fast. You can't burn it. Because if you burn it, it starts, it starts rolling over. It'll start ro trying to roll over. So you have to really kind of slow roll it. And that's something to remember about this. But because of the way it looks, you can obviously tell this is meant to be slow rolled. Or this is meant to be hopped. Because if you hop this, it'll hop up and it'll hop down and it'll sit. So, and sit. So, that one, I'm, cur I'm curious to actually like catch something on that. Now, one of the things I thought about doing, kind of a modify to this bait, is actually to take the tail and to dip it into some chartreuse. I got a chartreuse dye that I think that if I dip that tail into, kind of give that little bit more of a more of a glow on the back end and I think that might just be a little bit more enticing when it comes down to the bass but eh, we'll see we'll see another thing that I bought I bought this yesterday was one of the h2o jointed swim baits right here grab it like that yeah that guy right there so, sister and swims, and the action's not too bad. I just the thing is, is like I'm not quite I'm not quite sold on it. You know, it's just I just I don't know. Maybe it's because I I I bought the the white. Uh, crappy collar. The reason why I bought this is because it was it actually had a really nice uh, sheen to it. So it, it gave off a lot of flash and it has sort of a white profile even though it has the the crappy you know spots all over it. I There is crappie into the lake so that's kind of not necessarily a factor because since there is that forge there, that means the bass are probably going to be able to see it. But, I, but the reason why I bought this is uh, not for some sort of slow action retrieve, but really just to burn it, just to burn it through, just boom. So that way, is whenever something came in, it would just boom, like it would hear it come through and it would just smash it. But I think I've gotten a bite off of it, but I can't really be sure because nothing ever hooked up, which maybe one of the things I thought about doing is actually upgrading the size of those hooks, even though like I know sometimes that back hook has a issue of coming over the tail and actually hooking the tail. I've had that happen a couple of times, but I don't know. I bought it just to just to try it, and it seems to it seems to work. Ish, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if I'm even fishing it right. That's the thing. I I don't even know if I'm fishing this thing right. And that's a, that's the fun thing about getting new baits. You're sitting there going, "Oh, am I, I I don't am I even doing it? Is is this how is this how it's supposed to work? Maybe, could be, possibly. But I just kind of figured with a bait like this, you want to kind of keep it moving. You want to just burn, 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 pause and pop it burn 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 pause pop it but when it pops when you pop it it does this whole like whoo sort of thing and it makes this huge flash so i don't know it could be it it could produce i mean i was on the lake today and i saw a herring no crane herring i think it's a herring no, it's a crane. It's probably a crane. I'm not a bird expert. It's one of those long-legged 
fish eating birds. I mean, that's that's what they are. I mean, you see them all the time. I, I'm pretty sure it's a cr herring, crane, one of them. But it was sitting there and it was just waiting, posted up in this grass patch, and it totally nailed this. <laughs> I would assume a giant shad. Like if if this was if this was a re representation of a fish, the shad had to come out to about right here. So if I actually had, actually, I do have a bait that is similar in size. It is a glide bait, but I mean, I mean that thing is probably about that long. Probably about that long, yeah. But yeah, it's it's about the same size as a shad, and I would assume something like that would work. But also at the same time, you're going to be you're you're then specifically throwing that for large large bass. You're not you're not just going out there and catching bass. You know you're you're specifically out there trying to catch a big one. And I kind of knew that this thing here probably would not get chomped unless it was a big bass. I mean, let's let's face it. Those smaller bass probably wouldn't be able to get that into its mouth. You know, it and see the thing is, is I'm pretty sure that I got bit off of this a couple of times. But like I said, nothing ever hooked up because I think the reason why is they were smaller bass. And that's the reason why. So I'm not necessarily giving up on that, but I am probably going to throw it in specific spots at specific t specific times. I think the the best time and place for that is honestly the middle of the day when the sun's high and you have bass that are tucked up underneath cover. So when you have when you have the lily pads that are bloomed out because right now we're in this weird point to where the lily pads are still i mean they're probably about like that big i mean the biggest one i think saw maybe have been like that so they're not they're not full grown sized yet and since they're not full grown lily pads the bass aren't necessarily able to tuck up underneath them and get shade so it's just, you have this like open field of like stems and stuff. And that doesn't, that doesn't provide the cover that the bass really needs. So I don't think the bass have really moved into lily pads yet. But I think that is going to be great for like edges of stuff that have like, if you have cover and you have an edge and that thing, if you toss it out and just blah, 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 right past an edge and if you have a big bass it might just flat just just nail that dude so i mean that's what i'm hoping that's what i'm hoping but the other thing i was throw the other two things i was throwing today well the next thing really we're we're just going to go down the line so the next thing i was throwing was that guy right here the spro frog Got that little white belly. And uh, I did get a top water blow up on it today. And I nearly, nearly caught a bullfrog. That thing was big. I mean, we nearly had legs. It was close. He, uh, he hopped down on, on it and just like, boop. He went for it, missed. I don't know why he missed. Terrible aim. But, uh, yeah. That guy, I, I, I was throwing him today. And uh, lesson learned. If you're going to throw a frog, make sure it's not on fluorocarbon. Because I was switching out baits, and I had, and I had a Texas rig punch rig already rigged up onto that rod. Because I'm waiting on uh my actual like punch rod something to actually be punching and flipping 
and using as like Texas rig sort of stuff, you know, heavy weights, big baits. I could use it for that. And that rod isn't here yet. And it should be coming probably within this week to probably next week, you know, depending. And so right now I'm kind of hitting this conundrum of do I replace baits when I'm ever, when I'm, you know, fishing or do I not? you know switch out and that that's the only that's the only crappy thing about having a limited number of rods is because then you're you're having to make decisions on whether or not you want to switch baits because if you're going to if you're going to switch baits you got you, you got to make sure that you got you got to make sure that you you've covered your options you know, you, you cover the table on what you can actually utilize the bait that you're actually using for. Are you getting strikes? Is it, are, you, are you seeing bass blowing up? Are you seeing a whole bunch of activity and you're just not getting bit? And is that the case? Because if that's the case, then yeah, you know, go ahead and switch up the bait. But if nothing's happening around you, what do you do, you know? And it's kind of like today I was I was seeing a little bit of top water action but at the same time I was like mm, I'm kind of hesitant on it because I don't have the quite right conditions to really be throwing what I had like I would need some sort of spook if I was if I was going to be thrown in in the conditions that I had today as far as it was kind of a little bit more muddy like, you know, not like super duper muddy, but you know, muddy-ish. Muddy-ish, it was murky. You know, I, had, I had a couple more inches of visibility today. I think I had probably uh, six, five to six inches of visibility. So, you know, eh. in, in some areas, some areas I had less than that, in some areas I actually had more. And uh, the areas I actually had more were really shallow, really shallow. Those are the areas that are tucked up in behind lily pads and grass and that sort of shit. And you just kind of go behind all that and you can just see clear water. And it's just clear water back there, you know. But that's what happens. All, all the uh, vegetation filters all that sediment out. It just causes it to be a giant filter. So in the back, it's usually a lot more clear. So that's why that's why whenever I started fishing today, because today when I when I when I first started, I first started when I first launched, I was using this guy right here. And I went from this guy over to that guy. And then after I had caught a couple on him. I decided, well, I should try a new bait. And that's when I switched it up to that. Because I was in that back water behind those lily pads and it was fairly clear. So I was thinking, well, if it's fairly clear, you can see this fairly well. And if you can see this fairly well, then why not throw something that is a bluegill imitator and that looks like a small bluegill, and especially right now since we've already gone through the bass spawn we've already gone through the uh i assume we've already gone through the bluegill spawn because i would assume the bass spawn and the bluegill spawn are right about the same time and i thought there might have been some bass spawning in there i saw one bass on a bed uh i mean he didn't have anything to do he was just sitting there on it I, don't, I didn't see any sort of eggs or anything like that. There wasn't any fry. He wasn't guarding any sort of fry. But I was assuming that this right here would get chomped. Because this is, what I do like about this, this is a small enough profile to actually fit into a little bit smaller of a bass's mouth. So this right here is decent for catching multiple bass. Now, what I did do, other than buying 
some swim baits and stuff. I did buy one of these, a tiny baseball bat. You need a tiny baseball bat just in case. You gotta protect yourself. Sometimes those bats get a little gangster. No, actually, this is a uh, this is a wacky rigging tool. What it is, it's a. Of course, you obviously see it's a piece of metal, a little piece of aluminum, and it has these little dangly rubber pieces. They almost look like little gaskets. And what you do is you stick your stick bait down the hole. And when you stick your stick bait down the hole, you move your little gasket piece up this thing. And when you start that way, you can thread that little piece onto your stick bait and that will make it to where when you wacky rig it, you're not losing your baits all the time. Allegedly. Because the first time I got a bite while using these, I lost my stick bait. <laughs> it just came off. What happened, and this is, this is what I think happened, is I was fishing it, and when it came up, like I popped it up, boop, boop, and it was falling back down. It probably f fell back down and hit the bottom. And the bass came by and picked it up. And when it picked it up, here, let me grab this. So we got this guy right here. This is what I was fishing with. I mean, this is the exact same setup that I actually lost. What I think happened is the bass grabbed it. And when I set the hook, it just start pulling that gasket or pulling that little rubber o-ring off and so when i set the hook it just whoop, ripped that thing off never had the hook in it and i came back with a weedless hook and an o-ring so congratulations justin you're one of the few people, ah, man, my nose is itching. One of the few people that will lose a stick bait, weedless, on an O-ring, while catching a bass. So, remember, that's something to kind of keep in mind, is when you go to set the hook on that, maybe wait a second. Maybe give it a maybe give it a count. Maybe see if he's not swimming off or something. Because I mean if he if he's swimming off, go ahead and let him. Let him swim off with it a little bit. Let him get it in his mouth. Just a little bit. But I was worried that he might swallow the hook or something like that. So I just got and he hit it pretty hard. I I'd, I'd assume it was a he because I mean just just by the way it it picked it up and like and I ripped out of it. I'd assume it was a buck bass, probably garden to bed. Or ah oh man, my nose is itch in. Something about Ugh. Gotta love springtime. Gives you the itches on the nose. But oh, what I was saying to that was it was probably a buck bass that picked it up by one of the ends and was moving it off of whatever bed. Because I think there's still bass that are still sitting on beds. So it's like, hey, come on, girls. I'm down to party, you know. And they just haven't got the memo that the spawn's over. And, you know, they're still just there waiting, waiting for a late spawn. And, uh, you know, there's still going to be some late spawners, you know. There's still going to be an occasional spawner or two. I think just because of the, the way the weather played out, it just made this spawn so funky. It, it, for one thing, you had just tons of rain, cold temperatures. So we had a warming trend to where we were starting to get into that 60, 70 range. And then, then we started getting rain and then like 30 degree nights. 
like almost freezing, sort of like reverting back to winter. And it happened for like a week. And then the next week after that, it was like rain and storms and, you know, ugh. And now we're finally to the point to where it's just rains and storms without the cold. So now during the evenings, we're actually starting to hit like 60 degree temps. So we went from like 30 degree temps to 60 degree temps in the evening. And it's just like, what are we doing, guys? Are we spawning or are we freaking out? Is the shad doing whatever it is? I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> And it's hard to think. It's a hard, it's a hard thing to figure out. It really is. I mean, I I try to figure it out every time I go out there. Every time I go out there, I try to like make sure that I'm, I'm on my p's and q's and I'm figuring it out and I make sure that I'm trying to do the things that I'm doing in order to catch fish. But sometimes it just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen like that. I mean, it doesn't happen like that for me. I mean, for for the most part, sometimes it does. Sometimes it does happen for me. For the most part. Or at least what you see on Instagram. Because everybody knows what you see on Instagram is essentially the best part of people's lives. That, that 10% of people's lives were like, look, I'm awesome. That, that small little, little bit, you know, they don't see the hours and hours of just... Uh, 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 and then that's what you get. You get hours of that. And then eventually you get the, whoop, oh, I got a big one. That's the point what you see on Instagram. You don't see the hours and hours and hours of fishing. You don't see all the money spent on lures that got lost. You don't see all the time that they spent watching YouTube videos to go, oh, I shouldn't use a MEPS here. Or, oh, I shouldn't use a Texas rig two ounce weight whenever there's soft mud and it's only a foot of water. You know, oh, oh, you know, you just get these realizations, but you don't get those without hours and hours of experience and hard work. It's the hours put in. It's the time put in. I mean, I can't tell you how invaluable it is to sh just to be able to go out once a week and go fishing. Just once a week. Once a week, it makes it so much better for me to be able to figure out and pattern these fish. Just once a week. And that's that's just on, that's just once, you know. That's not twice a week. That's not three times a week, which is probably going to become more, especially now, because here's another announcement for you guys: is the fact that I'm joining the KBF Challenge Series Missouri State Tournament. What do you think about that? I'm going to become a tournament angler yeah now I'm not saying that I'm not going to say that I'm going to do well but as of today I'm pretty sure I'll finish in the top 10 100% I'll finish in the top 10 that being said as of today there's only 10 people that's joined this fishing tournament so that being said, I can come in last, still top 10 in the state. That's what, that's what I'm talking about, top 10. But I think I'll do well. I mean, if, if the bass that I was catching today are any sort of indication, I mean, I should probably, I'll, I'll probably place, I don't know, like five or six. I, I, I say, I say mid-pack. If I got a kicker, it'll probably be like four, five. Wait, three, two. Oh man, mid packs five. So yeah, like four or three, fourth, third, maybe second, possibly first. 
if I get if I get a couple of kickers this month, uh, you never know. But see, I'm also fishing against people who have been fishing these tournaments before. So there's most of the people that are fishing this this series are honestly more experienced in tournament angling than I am. So that's I mean that's fine. That's cool. You know, I'm I'm glad that I have some at least stiffer competition. You know, it's not, it's not going to be some blowout thing. There may only be 10 people, but you know what? I got to beat these 10 people. These 10 people are fishing just as much if not more than I am. You know, these aren't just some weekend angler guys. You know, some of them have done like like I think one of them had done oh god, it was it was a lot. It was like 70 tournaments or something like that. Whew. That's a lot. That's a lot of tournaments. You know, especially if you're, I mean, you, you got to have the time to be able to do it. So if you're doing all that tournament angling, you're getting all that experience in order to be able to fish for these tournaments and fish in these tournaments. So, yeah, I got a little bit of steep competition. There's a bit of a bell curve on this, you know. It's not something to where I should just take lightly, but I and I and I know the way I'm going to approach it. So there, so what, right now and also right now I'm waiting on the rest of my gear to get in because I was kind of like, uh, should I join? Should I not? Should I join? Should I not? And then I decided I'm going to go ahead and join. I'm going to go ahead and join the tournament and order the stuff that I need to get. So most likely all the stuff that I need for the tournament isn't going to get here until later on this week, which I'm pretty sure tomorrow is the first. So I'm pretty sure tomorrow is the first day that the tournament actually starts. And from there, until I get my gear, I'm off the water. And, and when I say off the water, it may not necessarily mean off the water. It just means I'm not submitting photos. I'm not going to be trying to submit catches when I, when I don't have the proper gear to actually compete in this tournament or actually participate in this tournament. So it, it was kind of one of those things that the entry happened first before the gear. Because normally you buy the gear first or you go out and get your stuff Unfortunately, this time I just ended up just getting it offline and just ordering it. And now I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I mean, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to sit there and just, you know, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, i got to wait on my stuff. I can't fish yet. I mean, most likely I'm not going to be able to fish until next weekend anyways. So that also being said... Most likely, most of my gear is going to get here before then. And the biggest thing is the catch board. Because I need to have the catch board in order to... In order to actually be able to measure the fish. Because I don't, I, don't I don't have any sort of measuring device. And I bought this uh, board. It's called the catch, bo uh, the catch board. K-E-T-C-H, I believe. I bought it in red. <laughs> Whew. Told you. Springtime kills me. Kills me every time. But that also being said, with this catch board, I'll actually be able to photograph, me like measure and photograph the fish to where I can actually submit them. But I'm not going to get on the water until I actually have the stuff that I need, or at least I'm not going to be doing tournament angling when I don't have my stuff. So the way I'm going to approach it is when I go out on the water, it's either A, a tournament day, or B, a fun fishing day. There, I, 
I need to make sure that there is a difference between the two. Like if I go out and I'm like, hey, any fish I catch today is going to be valid for the tournament, then I need to be in tournament mode and I need to have all the stuff that is required in order to participate into the tournament. If I don't have that stuff, because there are fisheries to where, like the uh, Springfield Lake that I fish all the time, I hardly ever wear a life jacket there. Like, you know, I, I know some people are like, hey, you have to wear your life jacket all the time. Yes, I do agree with that if you're a person that's not comfortable with the water, if you're not comfortable swimming, if you have injuries that makes it hard for you to swim, if you're, you know, not really physically fit, if you're new, you know, it, there's a lot of different factors, the reason why you should. And most of the time, it's better to be safe than sorry. So, and you know, that's, that's really what it comes down to. Most of the time I say, yeah, w wear that life jacket, wear it. If you, it, you know, if you even think that you might need a life jacket, go ahead and wear it, you know. But the areas that I've been fishing, they're, sh they're shallow. It's, it's, I mean, we're talking like a foot or two, le you know, that's it, a foot or two. And uh, the wind's blowing me into the bank, you know. So even if I did lose my kayak, it'd probably blow the same direction I'm going or, you know, it, it get blown into the bank. You know, it's not going to just travel away from me, you know. I mean, yeah, at least I think in most places. I mean, even then, it, even if it did travel away from me, you know, it, it would suck to lose a kayak, but I'd rather lose the kayak than lose, lose myself. So that being said, you know, most of the time I do wear, like, most of the time when I go to, like, a lake that, like Stockton Lake, for example. Stockton Lake is extremely windy. There's tons of different boats, you know, bass boats, pleasure boats sometimes. And if you get towards the main lake, you know, it's really kind of treacherous there, you know. So, I wear that thing constantly there. You know, whether it's, whether it's hot, cold, or whatever. I wear it all the time. But at Springfield Lake, I don't. It's a 318-acre lake. 70% of it, 80% of it's three feet and under. And I'm five foot eight. So even if there's a foot of mud that I stood up in, I still, I still got my head above water. So that's where it really what it comes down to, comfort level. And that's another thing, is I'm also not fishing conditions that are so rough. Like I'm not fishing these high wind conditions. Generally, if it's, if it's blowing over a certain mile per hour, if, it, if it's blowing over 20, then I'm usually off the water. Like, I, I usually don't mess around with anything above 20 unless I know the area and I know the area that I'm putting into that is protected from the wind. If it's protected from the wind, then I don't have anything to really worry about. But, I mean, most of the time it's not. And also with high winds, you know, it, it can cause trees to fall. It can, it, it, it can cause a lot of things. So, you know, that's just, it is what it is, you know. So, in reality, you should just wear your PFD. You know, why not? Why not wear it? I wear it sometimes, most of the time. If I'm not on Springfield Lake, I wear it. New Lakes, I wear it. If if, Jam if the James River is up and it, it's running and I'm on the James, then yeah, I'm wearing it. But most of the time, whenever, and it's usually that just one, it's just, it's just that one spot that I really don't wear. Pretty much everywhere else I do, but yeah. 
it is what it is. But hopefully, when it comes down to this tournament, I'm hoping to do well. I'm hoping to do... You know what? I'm going to place first. That's what, I, that's what I want. That's what I want to do. That's the goal. The goal is number one. Every tournament, the goal is number one. You want to be number one. You don't, I mean, you want to finish as high as you can, but you, you want to do your best. But the goal is number one. And that's the goal I want to reach. And I'm going to end this here today, and I want to tell you guys, thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching this, for paying attention to this stuff. Hopefully, hopefully there's some information in here that I'm relaying to you guys that that is helpful. It might be, it might not be. It could be okay information maybe it's entertaining maybe you get a good laugh or a goof you're like ha you only catch 13 inch bass well that's enough reason to watch this now isn't it and that's enough reason to subscribe too another reason to subscribe because you like this and if you like this stuff go ahead and share this with everybody out there because i want to grow this as much as possible just like i want to get better at tournament angling and I want to get better at just fishing in general and getting better at doing these podcasts and getting better at just everything in general I just I just want to get better I just want to get better you know I don't want to make the excuses to not get better and that's what it is don't make the excuse to stay at home make the excuse to go out and fish and I'll see you on the water peace